both going to do about half an hour presentation each, then we're going to have some stuff from the floor. About half, well it was originally going to be half eight, um, we were going to uh, have a break for a video for half an hour and then come back at nine for the last hour um, where there's more interaction and people uh, politely disagree with each other. Or, <laughs> agree, or agree, you never know. I was, I, was kind of, I was quite intrigued by this argument because it's kind of like taking a big internet argument and putting it into a room. So it's almost like reversing technology, isn't it? You know, all the discussions going on on the internet. And so we're having a go at seeing what happens when you take a kind of argument off the internet and put it in a room. And certainly, you know, looking at some of the comments on the internet, and we're all going, no, oh, no, it's going to be quite abusive. It's going to be rude to each other. So I very much hope that that's not going to be the case. And just because we're all sitting in a room together, we're all suddenly going to change into nice, polite people. Because it would make my job a lot easier. We have got some... Um, uh, we've got some uh, um, uh, rules, we've got four rules that we agreed. Uh, one was no, no verbal abuse, no use of threatening language. Um, we're a bit disagreed about whether interrupting person speaking was good, so we're not, we're not quite sure whether that's good. Um, uh, but no yelling comments from the floor uh, if we can help it. And we're going to try and address the comments through the chair in the normal way if we can. Um, the, um, the poll's uh, provocative title for the day, uh, debate is Is there a secret elite controlling the world or are conspiracy theories paranoid rubbish? We're not going to take a vote at the end to see whether everyone agrees it in the normal debating way, but we might see if anyone's changed their mind at the end. Um, we have Paul from Manchester Skeptics and Steve uh, from uh, We Are Change. I think Steve is going to go first. Yes, I am. Um, should I start? No anyway, um, uh, I, uh, I'm here representing We Are Change Manchester. I uh, studied uh, chemical engineering at uh, Birmingham University. Um, before that, I studied chemistry and physics at uh, Manchester Grammar School just down the road. And uh, the, the chemical engineering course that I took included structural components. But really, to understand what happened on 9 11, you really don't need to be an academic. You don't need to, any more than you need to ask Richard Dawkins. Uh, if you're a giraffe or not, because he's a professional zoologist. Uh, it really is far, far simpler than that, and even basic physics that's taught to 14, 15, 16 year olds can demonstrate quite clearly, uh, quite clearly the, uh, the arguments that I'm going to be, uh, well, one of the arguments that I'm going to be demonstrating today, maybe two. Um, there are six basic uh, arguments that I want to be presenting today. I'll, I should say something about concision first. Um, he is right. We're taking an online uh, online debate, which is huge, and you simply cannot get your head around all parts of 9-11. There is no way you can possibly do it, because there is simply too much evidence out there. You have to select what you look at. Um, uh, we actually in Manchester is a universally, unanimously, 9-11 uh, truth organisation. Um, um, when you specify what you're going to look at, Really, you should be looking for the best evidence, for the most copious evidence. So, I'm not going to be, uh, first of all, I was told that this was going to be a 20 minute presentation that I was to give today. So, uh, I put together a fair bit less than I possibly would have done if it was going to be a 30 minute one, but I'm going to be going through it at breakneck pace uh, anyway, assuming that I'm going to be running out, actually, of uh, running out of time rather than running out of material. Um, the, so, the core thing that I'm going to be explaining. It, 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 so the first thing that I need to do is direct everyone's attention really to the World Trade Center. Um, there's, there's, there's an awful lot, of, like I say, of extraneous factors that you can talk about. You can talk about images from the airport, you can talk about <coughs> the Pentagon. You can talk about um, uh, all sorts of aspects of 9-11. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, it is a wider conspiracy debate, but We Are Change Manchester only really advocates on 9-11 at 7-7. And I frankly don't feel I can prove uh, beyond what would be called a reasonable doubt that 77 was an inside job. Despite the fact that I believe it probably was, I can't prove that. So I won't be touching on 77. Oh, we might touch on 77, but I won't be uh, uh, focusing on it today. I'll be specifically talking about 9-11. Uh, as I say, uh, there's an awful lot of extraneous factors you can talk about with 9-11, but the place where there's most evidence, because of course there was so much media on top of it, the place where there's most evidence is by far the World Trade Center. There are literally thousands of eyewitnesses, none of them are paid by the, well, 
very few of them are paid by the military. Um, and you've got um, and you've got video cameras on it from the second from the second the, uh, the first plane hit. There were video cameras. There were video cameras on it. There was even a video camera on the first plane hit, but that wasn't, of course, uh, well, that wasn't, of course, uh, 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 deliberately on it. That was just the no first people who reported the North Hay Brothers. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so uh, first, I'm trying to demonstrate that you have to select what you're going to look at. And that's actually a very difficult task. Uh, there are six uh, essential, what I would call proofs. Now, scientists have a different version of what the word proof means. Um, as for a scientist, the proof is like the like the least worst theory. Uh, you get a you get a proof, and it's temporary, more or less. That's the way that's the way scientists perceive it to an extent, um, and until better evidence or falsification comes along. Uh, however, some of the some of the things that scientists rely on, uh, Newtonian principles, for example are not uh, what you would call uh, significantly open to debate. I don't think there are many people here, I'd really be very surprised if there's more than one or two who reject Newton's laws of principles, uh, Newton's laws of motion. I really would be very surprised if there's one or two. But that's, a, that's an accepted, almost universal consensus on Newton's laws of motion. Um, so, so when I say proof, uh, if, you, if you listen to um, the uh, teacher, the physics teacher at MIT, um, teaching physics, he will actually say, we can't prove Newton's laws. Even over Newton's laws, he will say, we can't prove it. Uh, all, we, all we have is we have a vast amount of data, and every, within that vast amount of data, there is no, there is no falsification of Newton's laws. Um, so that goes for an awful lot of laws, but what I'm really saying here is that scientific proof is not, uh, it, is not it's, science really doesn't have a, a, word, a word proof in it, uh, in my opinion my understanding of the situation. Uh, what instead happens is, uh, is consensus is reached after enough data has been gone through. Um, uh, there was a point I was trying to get to there. So when we talk about scientific proof, we're talking about a colloquialism. It's not, it's not strictly scientific proof. It is, it is merely a, uh, a, something that people talk of. And what they really mean is proof beyond a reasonable doubt. But of course, science doesn't have proof, so uh, so it is more or less a colloquialism. Anyway, uh, so the six uh, six arguments I want to uh, demonstrate for controlled demolition. Now, controlled demolition, just in case you don't know, is where pre is where explosives, usually explosives, are pre-planted within the base, within the building, uh, usually accompanied by incendiaries, and can incendiaries cut the steel in a building, uh, steel frame building. We're talking about here, of course. Um, and uh, they say synchronistic to take, take the building down. Okay, okay so, um, so there are six arguments that I want to demonstrate that, uh, demonstrate, uh, that demonstrate that 9 11 was a controlled demolition. I don't consider this to be a controversial fact, although, however, it clearly is a controversial fact because there's so much controversy to it raging around it. But I think it's frankly obvious. Uh, the first uh, argument is something I call free fall acceleration, which uh, my opponent Paul um, claims that uh, claims that it's been debunked in his in his, in his article. Uh, that's specifically because he's talking about um, the collapse of uh, World Trade Centers one and two, which fell below uh, free fall acceleration. Uh, I'm going to be going further into free fall acceleration in a second. Um, the second proof, uh, and that's because it's such a compelling scientific proof, in my opinion. Um, the second proof is something called verticality. Um, I, I, I expect to go more into, this, more into this debate later, but it's really rel relatively simple. Something weakened on one side, as the World Trade Center was, should not fall vertically. It certainly shouldn't be falling through its own structure. It should be falling towards the side that is weak because of the re reduced resistance on the right on the side that was impacted by the planes. Uh, third proof, uh, in our colloquial manner, is molten steel. Uh, the fourth proof uh, is explosions. The fifth proof, of course, explosions are the most, the most obvious and uh, empirical evidence that there were, in fact, explosives. Um, the fifth proof is nanothermite. And I did have a sixth proof, but I lost it. But, but anyway, anyway the, the, those, those that are, I'll, I'll stick with the five because I can't find it. <laughs> um, and it's, um, uh, the ones I really want to focus on are, first of all, free fall, and second of all, explosions. We can address the others in the debate afterwards, but uh, we're, we're, I'm running out of time rapidly, so I need to really get to it. Um, 
Okay, now free fall acceleration is something that uh, my opponent Paul referred to in his article, and he, and he said uh, there's, uh, there's uh, lots of sites that have already addressed this. And uh, one of the, well, the first one, the one he cited in his article was debunking 9-11. If you go to debunking 9-11, you will find no refutation of the free fall collapse theory on their, on their World Trade Center 7 page. Now, this is mainstream 9-11 mainstream truther argument. It's not an abstract one, it's not a complex one, it's something that, it's something that I could have understood knowing the physics that I knew at the age of 14. It's something that should be mainstream. It's something that shouldn't be uh, abstract and beyond the range of any, anyone but a physics professor. It's something that's relatively simple. It's mainstream and it's not addressed in, in, the, in the seven World Trade Center page on debunking 9-11. Uh, you can go and check that for yourself. They do have some peer-reviewed papers, however. And the reason I'm addressing this is because Paul cited it as a good debunking source. Um, now, uh, World Trade Center 7, I allege, and uh, most truthers allege, fell for 17 stories at less than 1% away from free fall acceleration. Um, now, those 17 stories exclude the penthouse. There's a, there's a penthouse and people will say, well, you know, if you, if you tag the whole thing, including the penthouse, then it's a, then it's a 15 second collapse. Uh, in fact, we're just talking about free fall acceleration for the visible portion after the penthouse has collapsed. I consider the penthouse, and most truthers do, uh, that to be a separate collapse event. Uh, here is that on the video now. I'm just right, so you can see, um, I'm not sure what they've done with these videos, but you can see that they're coming down in approximately, in approximately seven seconds. If you go to the original videos, you can see this. And the way you can see this is by uh, taking the original videos and putting dots on the frames, connecting up to physics software. Oh, sorry. If I'm in your way, please, sat, please shout. Um, I, although it's difficult not to be, because I do have to be at a laptop. Um, the, uh, you, can, you can connect this up to physics software, which simply does standard things, which is measure the, measure, the, uh, measure, the, measure the displacement from the original position, put that on a graph, uh, and then uh, take the slope of the curve. And if you take the slope of the curve at several points, then you get, then you get the velocity of the graph. Uh, sorry, the, then you get a graph of velocity with time. And that graph is a graph that I'm, just, I'm hoping to show you any second now. Just give me one second. This is the side-by-side -side comparison of, uh, of World Trade Center 7's collapse with known controlled demolitions on the side. So even, a, even a, just an average casual glance at it without going into any significant detail demonstrates, uh, demonstrates that, the, uh, that the controlled demolition is actually visually similar to other known controlled demolitions. Here, you can see him, uh, David Chandler, this is, this is a physics, uh, physics teacher from, uh, uh, from uh, the US. And uh, here you can see him doing the physics toolkit software. And I'm hoping to get through to, in a second to the, uh, to the uh, graph of velocity with time. There is the graph of velocity that is with time. And You can see that that is roughly, um, if you do it, follow it through, you can see the calculations that occur, and you, do, you can verify them for yourself, which of course is what science is about. Science is about verification for yourself. Uh, you can see the, st the straight line, the near straight line, um, going down to roughly uh, three seconds into the video, uh, just before it goes out of sight.